What is happening, Facebook family? This is Pastor Matt Stokes from Coastal Christian with my ministry comrade, Jesse Stokes. What's going on? Hey, sorry, a few minutes late. Today was not a 5 a.m. day. It was a long night with Connect Group. <coughs> so, um, slept in a little today. But we are here. Last night's Connect Group was great. Um, I have sort of a leadership connect group that has mainly just the leaders of the fellowship that are in some capacity servant leaders and Jesse does faith foundations and uh, man between the worship and the time together people just really transparent authentic sincere um, that's just a sign of just great health within our our fellowship and um, man you can't put a price on that right that's worth more than uh, a massive amount of t attendance and finances and big buildings we all agreed what we all are really looking for and what god's looking for what is pure hearts right mm -hmm. and so uh man what a blessing to be with um, this particular part of, of god's family so we're going to be in psalm 119 yeah and look home stretch people as soon as we get to here we are finished psalm 119 so i am pretty excited about that so we're going to pick up in verse 153 and this particular piece is connected this little piece of the psalm there's 22 pieces this piece is connected to the hebrew letter resh and each line within this portion of the psalm or the poem begins with the hebrew letter resh it's just a certain way they would write their poetry um, what really matters to us is what we can draw from it as far as meaning connected to God's word in our lives. So in light of that, Jess, would you pray for us as we get into this um, Psalm 119 and we start in verse 152? Of course. All right, let's so do Lord, it. Lord, I just pray. Um, God, it says um, in verse 156, Great are thy tender, tender mercies. <laughs> I said tender. Tender mercies, Lord. And uh, it's true that your mercies are new every morning. So we thank you for your new mercies today, your tender mm. mercies today. And Lord, I pray that you would awaken our spirits to receive from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Awaken our spirits to receive from you. That's just great. Okay, so here's what he says. And take a deep breath and we'll, and we'll look into this together. He says, consider my affliction, consider my affliction and deliver me. And, and for I do not forget thy law, thy word, plead my cause and deliver me, quicken me according to thy word. Okay, so there's a lot there already just in these first two verses. First thing he says is consider my affliction. So when I see him say that, there's a lot of us that feel afflicted in certain ways. We feel opposed. We feel that we're experiencing adversity and hardship, right? So we connect with this word. Consider my affliction um, and deliver me, right? Uh, now, his cause, obviously, is something he's going through that's causing him much to arrest. It's a plead my cause. is like a courtroom term. So obviously, he feels like he's under judgment when he uses plead my cause, right? And then he says those are the negatives, but then he gives the positives, right? One is deliver, and then he says deliver again, and then he says quicken me. And if you recall, the word quicken is synonymous with the word, does anybody know? What does quicken mean? Can anyone put it in the chat before I finish writing it? It starts with an R. Revive. Very good, Jess. Sorry. <laughs> revive. Revive me is really what it means. Anytime you see the word quicken, you can use the word revive. So if you wonder how often the scriptures talk about revival, if you see the word quicken, um, last night, there was someone in our connect group that said that their word for the year, you know, they're carrying with them into the year is the word renew. And they were talking about how much they look for the word renew when they're going through the scriptures. And I didn't get a chance to talk to him about it last night. But if he just saw that that word quicken is actually the word revive, he would see in the Psalms just how many times the scriptures are saying to renew me or revive me. Now, one other thing that you can gather from Psalm 119 when you're looking at 153 and 154 is that he says, consider my affliction and deliver me and plead my cause. What does that mean? It means that 
that this man did not live in an ivory tower, right? Obviously, he's experiencing all kinds of problems and concerns, frustrations. And that's important for us to understand because there are some of us that think that if we wholeheartedly follow after God, then everything's going to be perfect with our families. And we're not going to have, like, think about, think about David for a second. He had adversity in his family. He had hardship between the 12 tribes of Israel. David was very often at war. David struggled with his own thoughts about himself regarding his leadership and his management of the nation and of the kingdom. He struggled within his own family and he struggled with his marriage uh, he, with Micah. He struggled in terms of spiritual confusion that you read throughout the Psalms. He struggled with depression. Psalm 42, why is my soul downcast? Why is my heart disquieted within me? All of thy billows are going over me. So, I mean, you're constantly seeing that this man is struggling. So if you're following after God and somewhere along the line, some pastor, teacher, commentator told you that everything's going to come up roses. That's just not true. And you see it right here with the great psalmist David writing and saying, Lord, consider my affliction, deliver me, plead my cause. I mean, there's, I'm going to put those just so you can see them stand out. Consider my affliction, plead my cause, deliver me, deliver me. Right. You see what's happening there. Hopefully that hopefully that is making sense to you and why that's so important to remember. Um, in fact, the question I would probably just pose to those that are watching with us today is this. And you tell me what your experience is with this, um, Jesse. Do. How do I say it? do trouble? T R O U do troubled times draw us closer to God. What do you think, Jess? Maybe. Yeah, there's a definite maybe, maybe. right? Maybe. There's a definite maybe. The potentiality there is is for you to draw closer to God, but that all depends on your mindset. That all depends on your determination, your will, your desire to decide what you're going to do with the affliction that you're experiencing, right? Yes, sometimes, yeah. So that's what we need to look to is we need to say, how can I allow this to draw me closer to God, right? Um, uh, he, so he, look at him here. Here's something else when we were talking about um, the mindset of the psalmist. He asks for God, Jess. He asks for him to plead his cause, right? So in seeing that um, and redeem him, he, okay, so he is in need of God. Because we look at David as some sort of spiritual giant and somewhere along the line, he's like, he seems like he's good and he's not good. Throughout his entire life, he's in constant, consistent, regular need for redemption from God, for God to plead his cause, for God to deliver him, for God to rescue him, for God to redeem him. And so in all of that, and hopefully it's, hopefully it's connecting with you, look at these, this, look at this phrase within that. And that is the reason he says to consider my affliction and deliver me is for I don't forget thy law, right? Here's why I want you to do that, God, because I'm constantly remembering your word. Please my cause, plead my cause, deliver me, look, according to thy word. Because uh, your word says that that's the kind of God you are. You're the kind of God that shows up when I'm alone. You're the kind of God that shines his light in the darkness, right? You're the, the, the God that has shed abroad the Holy Spirit in our hearts, you know, that's given to us. That's the God that I need right now. And so that's the God to whom I'm going to pray and look for salvation. Now, look what he says in verse 55. Are you guys with me? Because I'm moving at a high rate of speed. Um, and I didn't have a single drop of coffee, so praise God. 
Psalm 155. Jess, can you read Psalm 150 or Psalm uh, 119, verse 155 for yes, us? For salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statutes. Mm, okay, let's think about that for a minute. Yeah. Um, salvation is far. So, so if salvation is far from the wicked, right? Salvation. I'm gonna say. I'll grab another pen. Salvation is rooted in evil. Yeah, Matt? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm saying look at the mathematics here. If salvation is far from the wicked because they don't seek thy word, they don't seek thy statutes, here's the reason why, guys, right? They're four. The reason that salvation's far from them is because they don't seek thy word. Then that means that the more that they run into their rebellion the farther they are from salvation. Do you see the math there? It's just a, 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 a correlating sentence or statement. On the contrast, guys, John chapter 6, Jesus said, anyone who, you know, not going the other direction, anyone who comes to me, they're in no way, there's no way they will be rejected. There's no way that they will be cast out. They will never be turned away, right? So think about that. And Jesus says, you know, come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden and find rest for yourselves, uh, souls. John 8 says, you shall know the truth and the truth sets you free, right? But you've got to come to the truth to know that truth. And I'm saying salvation is rooted in rebellion, but you can see the converse of that as well. And that means that if you want to draw near to God, look what he says here again. He's saying this, uh, Plead my cause and, and redeem me and quicken me. The source of revival, the source of renewal. I'm going to say it in here again. Revival is in his word. Okay, that's where it's found. Because he's saying that uh, quicken me according to your word. Um, consider my affliction according to your word. Redeem me, uh, deliver me according to your word. Salvation's far from the wicked because they don't seek thy word, right? So then you've got to ask yourself today, as much as I am, and this is what meditation is all about, is um, like, what are you seeking today? As we go forth into this day, everybody's seeking something. Sorry, Jess? Que estás buscando? Is that what? It means what are you seeking? Oh, say it again. Que estás buscando? Que estás buscando? Que estás buscando? Que estás buscando? Yes. Señor, señorita, que estás buscando? What are you seeking? Everybody's seeking something today, right? Like after I seek a cup of coffee, the rest of my day, I'm going to be going after something, right? I know what I'm going after because I have a schedule. I have a calendar. Thank God I have assistance in the ministry um, with Jesse and others who like help me with what it is that I'm seeking to do. But hopefully in the end, ultimately what I'm seeking is to glorify God through the way that I'm serving him, loving him, pursuing him in the midst of whatever else I'm doing, I want to make sure that I am one of those that seek the Lord. Isn't there a verse, Lord, yes, that talks about those who seek the Lord? Shall lack no good thing. Yeah, okay. Those who seek the Lord shall lack no good thing. Seek me and you shall find me if you seek me with all, all your heart, right? Jeremiah. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, so the wicked, um, listen, um, it, it, they're never far from his love. Wait, what? You just said how far away they are. Yeah, because they're not seeking him. But if they seek me, Jess, if they turn their face, right? Chronicles. If they turn, I'm going to, I'm going to hear their voice. I'm going to turn to them and I'm going to bring healing. 
And so you're never that far away. I don't know where you are today. You might be listening to this or you may know someone that's addicted to drugs, that can't stop with the alcohol, that's beginning an inappropriate relationship with someone else, that's hurting their husband or their wife or, or whatever it might be, that's watching filth somewhere out there on some kind of technology and it is deconstructing their entire morality and value system. And you can turn all of that, listen man, you can turn all of that around right now today if you just turn and seek the Lord. You are never far from his love. That's called repentance. The moment you draw near to God, he draws near to you, right? James chapter what? Yes, five? Four, eight. Four, eight, thank you. James four, eight. You want to put that in the chat? Yeah, yeah. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. That's what I want to say to you in light of Psalm 150, verse 155. Yes, salvation is far from the wicked, but couple that with James chapter 4, verse 8 that says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, right? You double-minded, you know, turn back to him. And, and, and he is right there. Yeah. So, you know what? How about I'll save the rest of this for next time we're together because there's just so much to think about already right here. That the psalmist didn't live in an ivory tower. He had family issues, tribal issues, war issues, leadership issues, marriage issues, spiritual confusion, real life depression, anxiety, right? But yet those troubled times, look, they drew him closer to God. And he wants God to consider his affliction. He's crying out to God to deliver him. And he's also asking, God to plead his cause. Why? Because his basis for asking that is that he's not forgetting God's word in the midst of all that he's going through. He says, I'm asking you this because I don't forget your word and I want you to quicken me according to your word, right? Yeah, salvation, you know, is, um, is, uh, is here for us, but um, there's people that are in rebellion and they're against God's word, but the moment that they turn to God, salvation is as near as the breath within their lungs. It says, if you just confess with your mouth, here's how close salvation is. If you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God raised Christ from the dead, you shall be saved right? For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He, he who comes to me, there's no way I'm going to cast him out. If the son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. So the wicked, whoever you are, if you're intentionally living in habitual, consistent sin, and you're down on yourself, and you're saying, my life stinks, and I'm never going to be any better. Hey, you're never closer to his love. Then if you just simply turn from all of that and you reach out with arms like child, like a child would reach out to his, his, his father in the midst of a nightmare and just say, save me, rescue me, redeem me, deliver me. He's there. He's there. He's there. Amen. So thanks so much for joining us. Jess, I, I'm sorry, I kind of ended up, I thought I was going to ask you to carry me this morning because I was kind of tired, but I just really ran through several verses there. Do you have any thoughts on some of that you want to share? Because I know you were typing over there. Yeah, mostly I was just saying good morning to people. But um, yeah, so not off the top of my head, mm -hmm. but I think when you say salvation is far from the wicked, mm -hmm. for they seek not thy statutes, I think it's important to note that Yes, if they draw near, God will reveal himself to them right away. Um, but it's crazy because it, um, there's a verse in Isaiah 59 that says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not sh is not short that it might not save. Mm. But it says, But your iniquities have created a separation mm. between you and God. Mm -hmm. So it also says in Hebrews that the Lord is able to save to the uttermost mm. those who come to him by faith. So um, God's actually longing to save like salvation it might seem far but second peter 3 says god's not desiring or willing that any should perish but yeah he desires all to come to repentance so, yeah you know the thing is we can look at the wicked and be like oh yeah they're just lost you know but that's not the mindset we should really have um because if you think about um people in the bible that jesus came to save was like zacchaeus the tax collector right, right. so wicked but you know um God got a hold of him. And yeah. Now, um, Paul, you know, so wicked, killing Christians, but God got a hold of him. And, right. You know, the amount of people 
that God saved, like Onesimus, who ran away as a slave, you know, mm. did this wicked act, but then God saved him, and, you know, it's just, you see the grace of God as well as the, the warning of being far from God, it must be coupled with um, the New Testament picture of God's grace for yeah. the wicked as well. Yeah. Man, learning grace is so important. And um, yeah, you can't say consider my affliction um, if you, uh, because God is not there for you. You can't say deliver me. You can't say please my cause, please my, because God's not there for you. Because salvation is far from you. But grace is near, um, you know, and, um, and grace brings salvation to all men. So grace is a great word to take into today. And since grace has been shown to you, how much will you show grace to others today? Maybe grace, maybe you have a word like like Warren had last night. His word was renew. But maybe your word just for today is grace. And you're just going to show a little more grace to the people at work. A little more grace to your, to your spouse. A little more grace to your children. A little more grace to the people around you that just might be like messing up in some particular way according to you right and then you're going to say you know what i'm going to be gracious in this particular uh, circumstance and in doing that you are a shadow you are a reflection of christ you're mirroring uh, mirroring a particular um, facet of christ that is so beautiful so much to the point that it says to the praise of the glory of his grace. of his grace that 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 you know in ephesians it's talking about how glorious his grace is that we should just praise him for the grace man that's how awesome it is and then here you're really seeing the psalmist crying out to god because he knows he knows that god is going to be gracious to him you know how he knows that because of his word because god's word is true and he has experientially not only spiritually and in faith but ex but in his reality he also knows that God's word is true and God says that he's gracious. So I hope you take those thoughts in today and I hope they're a blessing to you. If they are, share this with somebody. If they're really a blessing to you, bring somebody with you to Dawes Avenue School because Coastal Christian meets at Dawes Avenue School on 22 West Dawes Avenue in Summers Point. 9.30 is when we're going to be there this Sunday. Jesse has an 8.30 classic Bible study that begins before that. So if you want a double header, you can come to the 8.30 and the 9.30. But we might pop back on, today's Friday, we might pop back on to talk a little bit about Second Peter and what God has for us in this marvelous list of, of, of virtues and values that he gives in the first chapter. Hope you might pop on and see us whenever we come by this weekend. But otherwise, we'll be at Dolls Avenue at 9.30 or 8.30 if you want to be with Jesse and I. And we both totally look forward to seeing you there. That's right. God bless you guys. Have a great day.